Hello everyone. In today's video lesson, we're going to look at calorimetry. This is now the second lesson after going over the introduction to thermochemistry. And so now we're going to start to see how we can calculate that energy or enthalpy um, lost or gained in a system. Okay. Um, the first method is calorimetry, which we'll um, talk about right now. There are others that we'll get into in the next few days. So just to summarize these for you, they may or may not be in this exact order, but we begin with calorimetry. First, a bit of review. All right, so is this <clears throat> is this energy diagram, right, where you have your reactants over here, methane and oxygen producing CO2 and water. So is this an exothermic or an endothermic reaction? If you're taking biology, you may have called it exergonic or endergonic reactions. Um, so we see that reactants begin at this level right here. Let's see if I can change my pens. Right, so your reactants begin at this energy level. Then after some energy is needed to begin the reaction, this activation energy starts. We then see our products end up at a lower level. Right, so that means this difference in enthalpy this thermal energy or heat transfer. Um, lost from the system out into the surroundings, it feels warmer. That means it is going to be, now you're gonna think right now in your head, exothermic or endothermic, and it is exothermic, right? Moving on. So what a calorimeter does is in a closed system, which means you're not gonna let any of the material inside the reaction escape, you can then measure um, using just an increase or decrease in temperature uh, using a thermometer and see how much energy was, was lost or gained by the system. Now, we'll talk about how, we, how calorimeters look like and how they work, but in, in essence, they use water. So the energy lost or gained as measured by a thermometer in water, placed in water. Right, so heat is denoted by the symbol Q. So this Q We'll talk more about how Q actually represents this transfer of, of thermal energy heat, which will end up representing enthalpy, right? But for now, using a calorimeter, we're going to use the symbol Q to represent heat um, in, this, in this apparatus that represents energy lost or gained by the system. Right? This can be positive or negative. So if it's lost, it's going to be negative. If it's <clears throat> gained, it's going to be positive. Okay, so here we can talk more about Q. Okay. So energy can be lost or gained, it can be positive or negative. Right? And in this case, we're, we're, we're measuring, we're measuring the difference or loss or, or gain of energy um, through a calorimeter where the calorimeter is being is measuring heat using a thermometer, difference in temperatures using a thermometer. So for example, if a if the system the reaction taking place inside this calorimeter, if that is gaining energy, that means the surroundings must have lost energy. And if the system loses energy, we have always a positive sign. So negative here, positive here. Whatever your system is, your, your surroundings are always going to be the opposite. Now let's, look, let's talk about the opposite here. So now if Q of your system is negative, <clears throat> right, so it's lost energy, Right, think of a thermometer, right? Uh, beginning say at, uh, at, let's say roughly 20 degrees Celsius. If your system is lost energy, then your surroundings are, is gonna be positive. Right, it's gained, let's say it's gone up 30 degrees, 230 degrees. Right, so whenever one is negative, the other one's going to be positive, and it'll hopefully come together a bit more as we do examples. Okay, there are two types of calorimeters. Um, a coffee cup calorimeter, which is one that we're mostly going to be referring to and using in our examples, and another one is a bomb calorimeter. We'll look at each of these. Now, usually what we see is we see that um, energy is measured per mole of reactant, or even product, we'll get to those examples. Um, so that's called molar enthalpy, right? Isn't the real focus right now? We'll get into those examples in those lessons later on. 
but just know that this is coming up. We'll talk about units in just a bit, but whenever you're referring to a certain value, uh, kilojoules or joules, right? We can also sometimes refer to it as kilojoules per mole, or in other words, molar enthalpy. Okay, so these are two kinds of calorimeters. Um, our coffee cup calorimeter is right over here. It looks rudimentary. It really just is two styrofoam cups, a styrofoam lid, um, usually not a stirrer because that, um, that can increase um, energy lost, um, but you certainly can have one and a thermometer. Right, so the thermometer will be measured initially before the reaction takes place um, and then afterwards, after it's taking place. Right, then that will give us a Q value. Okay, uh, and then a bomb calorimeter. Sounds exciting. Okay, we'll talk about that uh, a bit more, but essentially it is a fully enclosed system here. Um, its formulas, which we will get to in just a bit, is slightly different. Um, usually involves a, a, a combustion reaction inside a different chamber. Uh, it's all calibrated so that um, we don't have to take into account the amount of water as we would in, co in our coffee cup calorimeter, but we'll get into that right now. Okay, so a coffee cup calorimeter. Let's go over our formula. All right, so Q, which is what we measure <clears throat> um, as a result of the, of the, of the experiment of the, of the calorimeter, um, and that we know is going to be in joules or kilojoules. Okay. Uh, mass, so maybe I'll just hide these, let's repeat them one by one. Uh, mass is usually the mass of the liquid inside of the calorimeter, which is more often than not water. Okay, unfortunately, because the density of water is, is one gram for every uh, centimeter cubed or one gram for every one mil, um, the calculation or the conversion between between uh, volume and mass is really simple, right? If we have two or 20 grams of, scratch that, 20 milliliters of water, well, that just means we have 20 grams, right? So it's always the same. Okay, C is um, the specific key capacity of, of, in this case, water. So every material has a, has a certain, a certain um, specific key capacity unique to itself. Uh, because we're using water, now that just uh, means that water will end up gaining a certain amount of energy and then that will allow it to change by one degree. Again, hold that thought. We will get into a more detailed discussion that in just a, in just a moment, uh, but essentially C is a constant and that constant is specific to the material we are using, which for a coffee cup calorimeter is practically always going to be water. Okay. Um, you won't have to memorize this, I suppose, but if you've done enough practice, you just, you'll just you just know what it is. I'll give it to you during any any quiz, test, or exam. Okay, uh, delta T is our, is our difference in temperature. So that is uh, final temperature minus your initial temperature as measured using a thermometer, right? Okay, so here's that more detailed discussion about, about C, about our specific heat capacity. So it is the amount of energy absorbed, which is in joules, right, per every gram um, for every one degree Celsius. So what that translates into is the amount of energy required to raise a unit of mass of a substance by one degree, right? And every substance um, has their own specific heat capacity. Um, I'm going to jump, I'll go back to this, I'm going to jump over just a bit to this table here. So water has a specific heat capacity of um, 4.18 joules per gram per degree Celsius. Right, we can look at look at uh, iron. Iron being a good conductor of energy, of thermal energy, right? You need a lot less energy, joules, right? A lot less energy um, per gram. So a lot less energy per gram of iron to change that by one degree Celsius, right? But for water, 4.18, um, we need four joules per gram to change it one degree Celsius. So that is specific heat capacity and different substances have different heat capacities. Right, even different states of water in this case, as you can see here. Okay, going back, because you skipped over this. Um, when we talk about, when we do calculations of a involving a coffee cup calorimeter, there are a couple of fair assumptions that have to be made. We can't, we, we can't um, 
properly consider our, our calculation or conclusion based based on off of a calculation unless these are made. So no heat, first one is no heat is absorbed by the cup or the equipment. So that means these the, the cup itself, the styrofoam cup, um, doesn't absorb or give off any 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 energy. Um, that is not always true, of course, because we are we are measuring the thermometer, right, which is inside of the coffee cup, and that needs to absorb some, some energy for that reading to take place. But we're making the assumption that other material is not going to absorb, and the energy is not going to be lost to that. Um, also, no heat is lost to the surroundings. So the surroundings being outside of the coffee cup, it's not um, gaining um, or losing any any heat, right? So a couple of fair assumptions. <clears throat> Okay, now a bomb calorimeter. Um, a bomb calorimeter, calorimeter is is quite different. Um, the apparatus is quite different. But if we consider the equations, Q equals m c delta t. What we're missing this is this is the the uh, equation for a coffee cup calorimeter. What we're missing in a bomb calorimeter's formula is m. M is not there. It's not present because all of this the, the specific heat capacity. C for the for the bomb calorimeter has been specifically calculated um, or calibrated for that bomb calorimeter, so it doesn't involve the mass at all. Um, so its units are are going to be different. We see that for a bomb calorimeter calibrated to a certain C value, um, you'll have to raise a certain amount of energy to change it by one degree Celsius. Not for every gram, it's just calibrated to this value. A bomb calorimeter has its own specific heat capacity. It takes all of the equipment that's inside it, all of the stirs, the, the uh, thermometers, whatever's inside. Uh, it's a very accurate way of, of, of um, using calorimetry to solve for enthalpy. Okay, so that is a bomb calorimeter and the difference in between each of the formulas. Let's do some examples. Okay. So here, calculate the quantity of heat required to warm 1.25 liters of water from 22 degrees Celsius to 98 degrees Celsius in an electric kettle. You know, ideally, this is the temperature needed to steep tea. So perfect. Um, all right, well, we have something to do first. This is in liters, right? We want milliliters because we know that one gram of water is equal to one milliliter. So you can do this in your head and probably figure this out yourself, but remember, um, there are 1,000 milliliters for every one liter. So that means 1.25 liters is equal to 1,250 milliliters, which then allows us to plug in a value um, that M is equal to, or mass is equal to 1,250 grams. All right, remembering that one mil is equal to one gram. So let's plug our plug our numbers in. We, we, know, we know what mass we have of water. We also know, based on the specific heat capacity for water being 4.18. Don't forget our units. Right, we have that. And temperature. Well, we, we know that this is should actually be delta T. Um, this may or may not be written as is in textbooks, websites, or even my own lessons, but it should be delta T. So it's your final temperature, 98 degrees Celsius minus the initial 22 degrees Celsius. Plug that all in. Don't forget your units. Mass specific heat capacity and temperature change in Celsius. Right? Simplify. Here we can see that uh, we can count, begin to cancel out units. Grams, grams cancels out, right? Um, Celsius, Celsius cancels out and we're left with the unit we want in joules. Turns out that we need 397,100 joules. You can change that into kilojoules. But that would be that would just be 397.1 kilojoules. Right now, the question doesn't say to leave it in a certain unit, so you can stop right here, and it should be fine. If you're ever in doubt for quiz test or exam, um, and it doesn't say, you feel feel confident at least for this class that you can just leave it at joules or kilojoules, and both will be accepted. Okay, um, we do need to talk about, I suppose, significant figures, so stay tuned for that. But um, here we have, as a review, because you probably saw it in grade 10, certainly in grade 11, um, in grade 12, we haven't reviewed it, but it is something that we can assume that you know, but um, I, I will post something for you to review. So here we have two sig figs, right, two sig figs. <clears throat> so that means we should leave our answer in two sig figs as well. So it should really be um, four, 400. Um, two sig figs would mean it's right 40 um, times 10 to the 1 kilojoules. 
right? Moving on. <clears throat> okay, next. What mass of aluminum in a car engine will absorb one megajoule of heat? It's 1.00, <clears throat> sig figs here. Megajoule of heat when the temperature rises from 22 degrees Celsius to 102 degrees Celsius after the car is started. So an engine block being made out of aluminum, you don't want that to melt. So it has to, there has to be enough mass to this aluminum so that it can withstand this change in temperature. Okay, so another unit conversion has to be made. Here we're talking about megajoules. Okay, we're using a coffee cup calorimeter. Obviously, an aluminum car engine is not a coffee cup calorimeter, but it has a unit we need, right? It has, it has joules, okay? Um, it has temperature, right? So we have, we have Q, we have T. It's asking us for mass, right? So we don't know mass, and we can figure out what C is based off of our, from our table. Okay, now this involves a couple of things first. You're going to have to rearrange this equation, so back to grade 9 math. Rearrange this equation, solve for m, and then go back and figure out uh, what the C value is or specific capacity for aluminum is. I said a couple of things. I guess we need three. <clears throat> and we have to convert one megajoule to joules. Right, so units have to all be have to all eventually cancel out, um, and we don't have specific key capacity in megajoules. We have it in joules. Okay, so let's just figure out what C is. C for aluminum is 0 0.89 joules per gram per, per degree Celsius. Okay, so we have to change to joules, and one mega is one times ten to the six, right? Million, right? Um, so first, let's solve. So solving for our our um, unknown value here, mass is Q divided by CT, right? Bit of grade nine. Here we have with for so for one megajoule we have really one million joules. So one and six zeros, one two three four five six, um, divided by the product of our specific heat capacity from the table times a uh, difference our difference in in temperature which is eighty degrees eighty degrees Celsius. Right, so before we move on, look, joules, joules cancels out, right, Celsius, Celsius cancels out, and we're left with grams, which is what we need because we're figuring out mass, and we end up with uh, 14,044.9 grams, or 14 kilograms, right, um, number of sig figs here, we had three, this for this number, two for this number, three for that number, the lowest number of sig figs is two, so our correct answer, rounded to the nearest sig fig, is 14 kilograms or 14,000 grams. <clears throat> now, that is really it for <clears throat> calorimetry. Uh, this next slide is just a preview of what you're going to see coming up. Um, we have talked about molar enthalpy. You might uh, see in your textbook in my lessons online. If, you, if, you're, if you're looking for extra practice, you might see delta H or enthalpy referred to as um, your enthalpy of vaporization, for example, if you're changing states, let's say from liquid to a, to a gas, enthalpy of combustion, neutralization, uh, enthalpy of formation when you're synthesizing or forming something. So these all are essentially referring to the same thing, just more specifically um, described based on what is actually happening in the in the reaction. Okay. Um, that's it for now. We will get into more detail when we when we look at your homework. So let me know what questions you have. You have um, you need some help with. We can we can as we as we work together online, we can figure out any problems you might have. Great. See you next time.